So, dude, what's up, man? Today, it's crazy that you're here. Yeah. It was a hell of a party the other night. Oh, man. That was fun. I don't even know anything about you, and here you are. (laughs) Yeah. So, I do a show on Friday night, and then at the end of the show, they decide to interview me, and then this chick asks a question. And she wants, and then instead of just asking from the crowd, Kita, who booked a show, a great guy, had a killer show. He had a beyond capacity show that you were on that I didn't know. I didn't know anyone was on. I just came and did my spot. He gives the microphone to this chick, and she just gets on stage, sits down, starts taking over her sweet time. Then she asks like five questions. We couldn't get through them because she was feeling, feeling, the effects of things. <laughs> and then you come up to me, you're like, dude, what's up, man? He's like, sorry, that was my date. <laughs> I, was, I was always talking about comedy and giving tips about comedy. And then he's like, I guess the first tip is not bring a, a girl who gets drunk. <laughs> yeah. So that was your date. Yeah, man. And uh, I did not think she was going to just jump up there like that. I. She was sweet. She was, really, she, was just, yeah. she was having a good time. It could have been way worse. Yeah, it could have been way worse. Yeah. So then you do that. And then the next day, I, you know, I go to Chump Karaoke. I was literally going to pop in, sing a song and bounce. And I go to the fucking bar and get a water. And there you are. Yeah. It's <laughs> so random. <laughs> it's just like, wow, well, I never worked with this dude. Never seen this dude before. And I see two nights in a row. So then, you know, that party was. That was so fun. Dude, it was really good, right? Yeah. Tell tell the audience what you said. You said people your age don't have parties like this. Oh yeah, no. Because they're usually doing what? They're always in the bathroom doing coke. Okay. Or they're just on their phone. I think that's why it was so fun. There was not a Gen Z there to be seen. I got my first sponsor, my first legit sponsor, and it's underwear, and it's sheath sheath underwear. Now I didn't take them out before. Now, these are really interesting underwear. First of all, they smell really good. I mean, they don't smell good. That was gay. Um, They do smell good, actually. They're soft. That's why I put on my face. They're soft underwear. They're naturally cool. Okay? They're called sheath underwear. They've got this cool logo on them. And then their whole gimmick is that you put your donger... You put your stuff there, and then, this is a to-do, I mean, then you put your tube in there, I don't know if you can see that. So your donger rest, your, your, uh, your, your bits are in there, and your kibble is in there, and then it's literally like, it, you know, it gives you a nice little, a little extra, um. Package there if you like that. If you're a person that wears jeans, and they got these cool colors, they're funky. And I'm gonna tell you something go to sheathunderwear.com, use my promo code. They, I don't sleep in underwear, man. I usually sleep buck because I have sheets like this, even. These are pretty soft. Like, I have bamboo sheets. These are pretty almost like them. That's pretty right on there. I, I would sleep on this if it was a sheet. And it's cool. Like, naturally cool. I like to sleep exactly. How, I don't like to wear underwear. I wore these to bed last night, and I didn't feel like they were cutting off my circulation. I fell asleep. Like, this isn't me being a hoe. This is me believing. I believe in these underwear. Like, um, we just started our partnership, you know, in order for them to be my sponsor. I got to get views, you know, and I think that there's a lot of things that we have to do, but it's like the algorithm is tough, um, but I love them. The brand, I haven't met the owner yet, but he's an upstart. It looks awesome. It's actually a very good product. You get a discount. You should try them. If you like underwear, if you like your package packaged up, um, I would try them, man. They're fucking good. They're really good. Like, I'm not going to do anything that I don't try. You know what I'm saying? So, try them. Do it. Sheathunderwear.com. And and promo code Jamie. See, I yawned in the middle of that. You couldn't do that on TV. Because it doesn't matter. Everyone knows everyone's a liar. And I'm not lying. How old are you? (laughs) 34. Are you? You know, you're a millennial. Yeah. 
So, so millennials are doing coke. I mean, I feel like a lot of people in LA just, you know, it's just always around. But it's but it's fentanyl. I mean, they got testers. Really? They got testers. They got Narcan. They got all these things. People are that much into coke that they have. They buy a test so they can do it. Yeah. Or you just do the old fashioned test where it's like, Joey's been doing it all night. He's still alive. <laughs> <Which is, laughs> I don't recommend that. I mean, wow. So uh, wait, you, you were like, dude, you guys like are raging. You're all singing. We're laughing. We're karaokeing. I mean, there was a lot of legends in that room. Yeah. And then you're, but you're like my generation. We're just doing the bathroom, doing coke, <laughs> and then two people by the pool vaping you. Too. Yeah. That wasn't be fun. I mean, well, yeah, everyone's scared to just, like, go up and, like, you know, be vulnerable at a party. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you go to a party like that, everyone's an entertainer there. We just went crazy. Yeah. We had fun. That's I the wanted way to should... sing, but it was just... Can I'm you not... carry a tune? Probably. In the shower. Dude, you know what? I, I don't think there was really... Maybe there was like two performances that were a little like, oh, you know, they could work. That one guy that did System of the Down. Yeah, he's a sweet guy. <laughs> Sweetheart. Hard, hard song to do. Yeah. But he, but, but he, you know, he really committed. And so you were like, oh, I'm into it. So yeah. the main thing with that was like everyone, if you commit. And we all just did. And it was like, it was wild. And I think I learned something that night. You got to pick a sing-along song. Yeah. That people know. Because then they can get in harmony and. And almost back up seeing you. Bro, it was supposed to go from 9 to 11. I got a call. I got a text. And uh, Monica said the last person left at 2.48. Damn. And I would have stayed. If I didn't have shit to do, I would have raged. Yeah. But, like, bro, I was just a good vibe. Totally. So then we're sitting there talking. <laughs> see, he's already got a good vibe. You see how he doesn't say much? He reads the room. Very important as a comedian. I know nothing about this dude other than I'm getting El Pollo Loco because <laughs> they got a bunch of El Pollo Loco. It's pretty fucking good. Dude, it was killer. It was really and good. And these people are all, you know, they they could have a killer chef or, or caterer, but they all love good. I mean, you know, Jeff, like, loves Carl Jr. He loves Taco Bell. I'm like, dude, I can't some of that stuff. But like, he's like, we're getting po Pollo Loco. And it was bomb. So much better than Chipotle. <laughs> I know. It really Way is. better than Chipotle. So I'm, a low bar, really. I'm sitting on the floor having El Pollo Loco, <laughs> and he comes over. He's like, dude, how crazy was that last night? Now you're here. And then you start talking to me, and I know nothing about you, and you start telling me some stories. So when did you come to L.A.? About 10 years ago. Really? Yeah. So you're 24. From what state? North Carolina. Oh, shit. I'm yeah. about to be down there in two months. Oh, nice. Yeah. I do. Charlotte or? Charlotte and Greensboro. Nice. Yeah. So you came out here for the dream. Yep. And then you said that you had you had gotten the gig. Well, yeah, I just, you know, I came out here. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted yeah. to be an actor. Take an acting class. And, then, you know, they're like, you got to make content. So I make a cooking show. All sketch comedy. No cooking. You wanted to be a writer first or an actor? Writer first. That's noble. Why? I just... Always just loved stories and reading, man. Like I got my bookshelf is way messier than anything in your house, man. It's, really? Oh yeah. Oh, this is Dan Pauston. Is it Pauston? Pauston. Pauston. What's your nationality? Last name Danish. Oh, you're a Dane. Yeah, you're a Dane. Okay, I've but it looks Armenian. You know, it's got the I A N. Oh. So you know, if I'm getting my car fixed, I can be. You know. Definitely get a deal. Yeah. So you come out and you start making sketches for cooking. Mm hmm. Comedy. Comedy sketches. No, nothing about cooking. No, we get all the food from restaurants. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'm waiting tables one day, and this lady was like, I cast a cooking show, so I dropped my tagline for the show, which was, uh, best way to turn your lady on is to turn that stove on. Okay. And she was like, come audition for MasterChef tomorrow. I was like, oh, you don't understand. I can't really cook. And she was like, just come in. Here's my card. You'll skip the line. What restaurant were you working at? That was Salt's Cure. That I was telling you about. Salt's Cure, which you yeah. said pre-pandemic in this hood, because I used to live in Los Feliz. Now I moved to Hollywood Central. And you said right around the corner, corner, Salt's Cure was the spot. Yeah, brunch spot. Really good pancakes. like Really good. Pork chops. But it was also like a scene. 
Mm -hmm. It was a scene. So, um, you know, I, uh, I, I got show up to this audition and everyone has like perfectly plated food on like big ass plates, you know, saran wrap. And I'm, my shit's in like tin foil, like it looks so ghetto. What did you have to do for the audition? You just go in there and they just asked you a couple questions like, oh, what got you into cooking? So I made sure to put my tagline in there. And, you know, I just had good energy and smiled. And they're like, oh, and I was still kind of like fratty from like college. So yeah. they're like, we, we, have, we can peg this guy into a character. What was your college? I went to uh, University of North Carolina. Okay. Yeah, Chapel Hill. Go Heels. Go Heels. So wait, so you Big do- win the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so you go, do you have to bring food with you? Is that a stupid question? Or do you have to- I brought food and like I didn't know what to cook. So my boss at the time was like, well, make this shepherd's pie thing. You could do it in a muff- muffin tray. Okay. I just didn't think about presents. I didn't know what I was doing. So you go in, you're chilling with them. And what happens? They were like, you're making it to the next round. And, you know, this is like. Are these televised or no, not? No, no, no. Okay, gotcha. But, you know, but the next round you start with 80. And then they, after two weeks, they narrow it down to like 40. Okay. And then those 40 people compete to be in the top 20. So they do film that portion. Um, but, you know, I, I'm like, I'm going to get eliminated immediately. I don't know what I'm doing. So I tell my roommate, I was like, hey, man, can you watch my dog for two weeks? He had my dog for three and a half months. <laughs> Wait, so where did you go? I made it to the finals on the no, show. Hold on a second. Was it in L.A.? Yeah. So wait, I don't. You go in, and what did they say? They say, "You're." What's the next process? Was well, they kind of like feel you out? They put you in a test kitchen and see how you work with other people. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did was like, our team captain's uh, Grandpa Bill or whatever, because he's old. And I, he's my also my roommate too, so I liked the guy. Um, in real life, no, in, in the at show the, at the hotel. So wait, go back. You had the show. You got a call back, and then what's the next thing that happens after the call back? You go out to Woodland Hills. Okay, that's where the studio is. Okay, and then you just um, they vet you and they try and pick the top forty in a day, compete. a couple hours, or what? It was like two weeks. So wait, you have to live there? Yeah. Oh, so they say you're coming now. Yeah. So that's so you're kind of on the show. Yeah, well, you know, we started with 80 out there in Woodland Hills from all over the United States. Okay. And then, you know, they kind of sift through their people and be like, okay, this person's annoying. We, we can't work with this one. This one we can't put on TV. And then they yeah. come up with 40. And then you got to compete for like an apron. So then you do your signature dish and battle someone else who has a similar signature dish. And then Gordon Ramsay, Christina Tozzi was a judge, um, test it. And then if you if you win that dish, you get an apron and get, get in the top 20 for the show. So this was, but this is like this, is this like a first episode of the season? Yeah, the first, ep the first couple episodes were the apron battles. Okay, so it's, it's oh, 80 so people weird. or 40 people? They started with 80 for the two first two weeks, and then when they start filming, there's only 40. Okay, so you had already... How long before you got from 80 to 40 in the first two weeks? I mean, that was like that was like two weeks. When I did... So you go up there, and they say you're going to have to live... Where do they put you up? In the Marriott. And everything... You can't have a phone or anything? We couldn't have a phone, but I mean, one guy definitely had an iPad. Yeah, and we all knew because he was like whipping out these great recipes. Oh. Like, we know David. But so they see. So so you go in and they say you were gonna, we're gonna. So they sequester you. Yeah. So this you started you got on the show even though if it was on the outskirts of the show. Yeah. So then you didn't even know how to cook. No. So what was your dish that you battled? Well, since I was kind of in this frat boy character, I was like maybe I should use beer, and then I was like, okay, beer battered fish tacos. I can do that. I like it. And then um, I borrowed another guy's cookbook who didn't make it in the top 40. Okay. Found the recipe for it. Went on the show. Just nailed it. Just aced it. How did you it. get the recipe? I borrowed someone else's cookbook. Was that legal? Probably not. I don't know. Online or an you actual book? An actual book because you couldn't go online at all. But you could bring five cookbooks. <laughs> this is so fascinating. Okay, so then what happens? So I'm in the challenge, and this is like, I've, te I've, I've tested this dish in the test kitchen. So they kind of know what I'm going to do. 
So it's not totally out of the blue. So and they, they film that. Yeah. This is like, it doesn't seem like Big Brother, but I guess it's Big Brother meets cooking. Oh, yeah. Okay. They're always watching you. We'll get into that. But Okay. Um, so this is like the second time I'm doing this recipe, and I barely know what I'm doing. And I put vodka in the beer batter, and I, I totally made this part up. But Gordon was like, Don, like, what is the what is the vodka do in the batter? And I was like, oh, it does something like uh, denature the gluten to make it really nice crispy. And I, I you made that up. I, I I don't know what that means. It might have been one of those like denature the gluten sounds so <laughs> legit. <laughs> and you can search it on YouTube, and I'm, I say it with such confidence. I'm like, I don't know. I kind of blacked out for a second, just yeah. pulled something out. Um, and then he was like, Don, where's this passion for cooking from? So I brought in the tagline. Well, you know, chef, best way to turn your lady on is to turn our, turn your stove on. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, guys like us know that, right, chef? Kind of like broed out. And then they started laughing. He laughed? Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to make that guy laugh? No, not at the time. I can't imagine. I, it seems like he would never laugh. Well, this is crazy. They didn't air this, but they thought that I might win at that point. So he brought... They filmed this. He brought me outside to the rest of the 40 chefs who knew that I didn't really know what I was doing. And he raised my hand up and goes, Don, this is the most humble chef. And he's so good and he has no idea. And then, you know, they saw me completely fuck something up the next time. So, <laughs> so wait, so you go in and you say, watch my dog for two weeks and you're in Woodland Hills for three months. How does it work? Do they feed you? They give you a per diem of like 50 bucks. Are you allowed to leave? We so snuck out one time, Jamie, and it was, I got in big trouble, but I was already in the top seven. So I was like, they can't get rid of me now. Wait, go slow. So hold on. Because if you do Big Brother, you're in and you can't leave. So you go to the Woodland Hills Marriott. They put you up and you do all this stuff during the day. Was it eight, 10 hour days? Sometimes way longer, like 15. Okay. And then. Do you get paid? $50 a day. Just that? Just that. Really? Yeah. So then you do this. That's crazy. But then where do you get the food that you're not allowed to leave? Well, you know, you'd get food on set. Always the same mediocre, terrible breakfast burritos with eggs and potatoes. And then you and then, and then then you do your thing and then lunch. They feed you lunch. And then, when, yeah. and then dinner is for your per diem? Um, yeah. And then, but you're not allowed to leave. So where do you get food? At the hotel. So you had to just rely on the Marriott feeding you. It was terrible. And you live not far, so your boy can't drop you off a pizza. No. And you can't no phone. You can't Uber Eats shit. Oh, man. Okay, so you go from 80 in the first two weeks, and then you're in the 40 at the, in the yeah. two weeks. And then what happens? So then you're filming. How many episodes is the season? 10? I think way more. Okay. Yeah, I think like 20. 20. -ish. I don't I've never watched all of it. Okay. The reality cooking shows are not my thing. Which is crazy cuz you're sitting there and you're going off with me the other night about how good the salsa is. The pico. It was good. At El Pollo Loco and it really was. And it was hitting. It was, hitting. It was hitting. It was like midnight. I was already saying like I rap like three songs. I'm like, I'm so fucking hungry and I'm like mac and cheesing it. And you're like, this pico's bomb, dude. It's really actually a very good pico for a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for a chain. Nicely balanced. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, whoa, okay. So then we started talking. But so you go in. You're two weeks now and now you're in the top. That's the top 40. Yeah. After two weeks. Yep. And then, you know, and then those first two episodes are like, all right, there's going to be 20 aprons. Like, I battled this woman from Vegas named Tequila. Okay. Who did like a jerked chicken taco and like, you know. Whoa, okay. Taco on taco. Yeah. That's why we battled. And? Oh, um, I forgot what I said, but I, I yeah, I whipped her ass. You beat her. Pretty with handily. The beer, yeah. With the with beer, the beer battered, battered fish, fish taco. taco. Yeah. Wow. And I also managed to, you know, I knew enough about cooking shows to tie the recipe back to my family a little bit. To lie. Yeah. To scam. Well, yeah, my, un my aunt and uncle have a really good pico recipe, so I just... I is that true? That. Yeah. So that is true. They're vegetarians, yeah. But you said you didn't know anything about cooking. No, but and like, you know, going on the show, I kind of, I was like, what can I fucking use? You know, I had an aunt that made a pie. So... 
you you once you got on, you started researching and said, "This is the this is the con I'm going to pull." Well, I'm like watching the other people who have watched every season of mm-hmm. Master Chef who are nailing it. I'm like, oh, she won. Like her pie didn't even look good, but that story was delicious. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you were telling me you were like, look, you get in where you fit in. Yeah. And so you're like, I never planned to do this, but I'm like, fucking, you got to do it, which is true. I mean, Bradley Cooper started on Discovery Channel as a host of a some kind of like travel show. So did Bert Kreischer, didn't he? Yeah, Bert. Yeah. Bert had his other. I think Bert was like testing a lot of different things. Travel show gig is nice. It's not bad, dude. Yeah, just travel around. And so you you go in, and then so what? Are people? I mean, I'm assuming people. Are you allowed to fraternize with the other people? Oh yeah, they. You know, some of my best friends to this day, I made because you know, like, it's like Big Brother. You know, if you're if you go into this, you're. You lose all your freedom with these other. You guys are all going through the same jail. <laughs> yeah, jail, jail. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, and so, did you people hook up? I assume. Oh, definitely. Is that legal? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to stop because, like, you know, we we all have that trick where, like, if you if you're in a hotel room and you don't have the key to your room, but you take the "do not disturb" sign, you can close your door. With the do not disturb sign And it fits in the lock So the looks, lock is still pushed Yeah So then you can come back And get in But wait What's the angle Is it you You're not allowed to leave your room So who's watching you All the uh, PAs there was, there was a guy named JP Shout out JP But he was always watching like a hawk So how did you get around that uh, We just you know you just took the risk. You were like, JP could be prowling the hall. So you, you, but why did you have to lock your door? Because you didn't want to hear, they did, you didn't want them to hear you go in your door. Well, you know, once you leave, it locks. So we didn't have keys, so we couldn't get back in. Oh, um, shit. They so, put you in yeah. a jail. It was jail. Yeah. Well, you wow. Know. So if you snuck out. Big trouble. To do, uh, to meet another, you know, person for a recipe. If you're trading recipes. You had to make sure you could get back in your spot. Exactly. That was a risk to be thrown off the show. Well, were, this was huge. There was this one mom, you know, um, on the show, and she was like, you know, she was a MILF, married. I'm not sure everything was going great, but there was one night her husband called her looking for her, and then they called me, and I was in my room, Okay. and they were like, Dan, where's so-and-so? She's not in her room. Where is she? Is she in your room? And I was like, no. They blamed you for taking yeah. her down. Yeah, okay. and it wasn't me. But they found her in another contestant's room. How did they find her? They, they just started knocking, and they found They caught her in there. Like, was she clothed? I don't know. I don't know so what happened? happened? But it's pretty obvious what was going down. So they found her, and what happened? She just finished the show. But do you, do you get disqualified? I think they, you know, if you're not essential to the show, I think they'll... They would be like, all right, you're not worth it if you're not listening to our rules. But it was, like, very draconian, dude. Like, Dude, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Especially because it's in Woodland Hills. No offense, Woodland Hills, but that's a lot. I mean, you're so close, so it's annoying that you can't go to Sugarfish. Yeah. Well, we if did you're have in mall Iowa, days. I get it. We had mall days, like, once a week. Oh. Yeah. And you allowed to use your phone then? No. But we'd go out as a big group, and we'd go, like, to the like the raw oyster place at the Woodland Hills Mall is fire, and they uh, film it. No, no, but that's like when we really became friends because we, you know, we'd all go out to eat and just get trashed. And how's the food in. there at the Royal Royal Oyster spot? Oh, amazing! Woodland Hills Mall is awesome. Yeah, it's bomb. It's sweet. So you went out to there and had a bunch of stuff. Yeah, we do that like once a week, which was great. Did you film six days a week? I think so. Maybe seven sometimes. That's um, insane. No union protection. No. What, nothing, what, dude. what you should have been marching. Yeah. We like do a, a wedding bl- challenge, then we'd come back and then film in the studio. Think about that. On site wedding and, Malibu. And then we go back and shoot more. Wait, you mean you had to cook for a wedding? Yeah. That's when they figured out that I had no idea what I was doing. Why? Well, by the way, yeah, before I say that, I want people to know that all the protesters on the fucking front line, and this is seven days a week, 
reality TV would grind your ass. Yeah. Just and for no money. For no money. <laughs> No cell phone, no sex for a meal once a week at the bomb oyster spot in Woodland Hills. I want that's what should be talked about on deadline. If you're a deadline Hollywood reporter, take that. I'm not saying the show isn't great. I'm not saying I don't love I love all those dudes. I love I don't even know him, but I love Gordon Ramsay. I love him as a TV star and all this stuff. But that's no one talks about that. No. Bro, you're worked like Gunga Din. Yeah. So that's, that's 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 what I'm saying. It's all bullshit. They don't fucking really look at what the business does. So go ahead. So you got Malibu. What happened? Well, we're cooking for a wedding Fascinating. team challenge. So like two teams cooking for the bride and groom. Um, and I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of going around adjusting pot handles, staring at timers. You know, I did that when I catered. I never knew what I was doing, so I just would hold a tray and just act like I was doing stuff. Yeah. Like okay. Exactly. But you have to cook. That's intense. Yeah, and um, so some some guy on my team is like, Dan, the Orzo needs more time. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, dude, I'm giving the Orzo time. I'm standing next to it. <laughs> he was like, no. He was talking about the herb. <laughs> and so I didn't, I've never cooked with time. I didn't know you got to take the leaves off the stick. Yeah. So I just threw a bushel in there. I threw like a whole, you know, bush of time in there. And Gordon Ramsay sees this and he goes, done. Get off your head. And he goes, open up your mouth. And he shoves a, a huge Christmas tree's worth of time into my mouth. He goes, how's that taste? Can't say anything because there's, you know, there's a bush in my mouth. And then and then he was like, that's right, Dan, the bride and groom are fucking rabbits. Quit flirting with the bridesmaids. Get back to work. Wait, so he's allowed to jam that in your mouth? Well, they didn't air it. They didn't air that part. But some people might have complained on that, but to me, that's funny. I thought it was it was the most talked about moment of our season within the cast. Cause well, like, why didn't they air it? Because they're scared of fucking... I, well, I think it's because I made it to the finals. And, and someone might be like, wait, how do you make it to the finals when this idiot didn't know what the herb time was on the second episode, you know? But it is a lot about the journey. That's what, that's what they stress the whole time. So wait, you said something about... You said... You snuck out and you almost got in trouble. What happened there? So we we snuck out. There was another reality show filming there. Um, I think they were like a metal welder show or something like that. Okay. But the PA is like saw knew that we were like under like surveillance. Um, so you know, I asked if I could borrow a cell phone. Got in touch with my roommate, um, who came to Woodland Hills, picked me and another contestant up. From the South, she's great. Her name's Brandy, shout out. And Brandy and I went out to the bar on our night off and, like, got hammered. I wanted to see my dog, but, like, my roommate was like, it'll break his heart if you just leave again. So we decided against that. So how deep in the journey were you? How many, were you a month, two months? That was, like, two and a half months. And you risked three. it. Yeah, I, well, I figured I was essential to the show at this point. And we'd have been deprived of every basic freedom so we just wanted a night where we could just do whatever we wanted so you went out with another chick on the show yeah and guess where we went we went to birds <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about bird. yeah. Yo, birds is the spot it's awesome. i can see dude guys like you in those boots <laughs> yeah. they populate birds all day a fedora so wait yeah. Im improv guys <laughs> yeah and you know they're gonna stay open late and they're not gonna rat you out mm -mm. birds Birds, if they knew you were on the show, which they might have, they wouldn't rat you out. They let me do the, um, I did my watch party of, like, the first episode. When really? I, when I got my apron, we watched it at Birds, which was sweet. Yeah, they're le that's legendary. By yeah. the way, Birds is, like, during the pandemic, I ordered from them. I was California Chicken Cafe. No offense. I love California Chicken Cafe. But Birds sneakily came up and beat them. Like, Birds got, must have the old season pots. Oh, yeah. And stuff because the flavor never changes, and it's incredible. Yeah. And somebody told me that when you sell a place, they have to sell the pots. and really? like the, the, because Oh, yeah, because of the flavors. Like in there. chili. If you have a chili spot, like the pots. They're seasoned. Yes. Yeah. So I kind of believe that with birds because birds, was just, it's just banging. Yeah. I mean, it's... The chili there is banging. The pie, the pot pie. Oh, the chicken pot pie is, is fire. Banging. The mac and cheese. You know, there's not a bad thing on bird's no. menu. 
So you're you're a bird head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the guy who made it the finals on Master Show loves birds. But birds <laughs> yeah. is bomb. It is good. So you go and you sneak out and you're and is the chick and you and the chick were hanging out. Yeah. Were you guys hanging out? She was married at the time, so no, but we did hook up later. Are you allowed to say that? Oh, cause she did you help that divorce or no? Uh no, she was already divorced. And no, but did she get divorced because she was well, she made it, you know, she made it on the show and then realized, oh my gosh, like I'm so much cooler than like the guy I'm married to that I married from high school. Damn. You shot, shots me. fired. Yeah. Shots fired. I mean, she's okay with it. She doesn't like the guy either. But. All right. So then, are you still friends with her? Yeah. Okay. So you hung out with her. And then, how did you, did you get busted? We got busted because that night I told you that Katie got caught sneaking out. Yeah. They were interviewing her. And they're like, what were you doing in David's room? And then she was like, well, Dan and Brandy snuck out. And she snitched on us. Fucking so rat. Yeah, she snitched. So then? Um, so then we got in trouble. And they didn't even know about it. We we masterminded our escape plan perfectly. And I told you I had that lock hack with the, did you not disturb? When yeah. the lock tries to go back in, it can't because the thing's tucked in there. Yeah. So, we, so, that, so you didn't get penalized? No, but they were like. I'm sure they were just watching us so much harder. So you went to the final seven, and what happened? Final five. We were getting down to the, the top five, and then we were, we were cooking stuff I'd never heard of, you know, like using caviar and foie, foie gras and stuff like that. Like, I'm a, I'm a North Carolina boy, you know. like I can, Chicken and waffles. Chicken. I can fry the shit out of chicken, man. I can, I can grill things, but at this point... In my culinary career, I, I was really out of my league because these people had all been cooking for 20 years and I'd been at it three months or so. Wow. So when did you get eliminated? I mean, at the... Uh, did you go to like the last episode or like the two episodes? I'd say like the third to last episode I was gone. Was there a big outcry? I mean, I was so I was so ready to leave. But from the audience? Um... I don't think we had a live audience then. No, I mean For after when it aired. Oh. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's been great, man. I've, you know, I didn't, I after this, I started working back at Salt's Cure inside the kitchen, and that's when I really learned how to cook. Yeah, so this. Working with chefs. So you tell me this, that you never knew how to cook, and you went through the whole show. Not knowing how to cook. I mean, I picked things up along the way, you know. And then then you said after that, so you get the job back at that restaurant, which was like a great restaurant. Yeah. And then you said, fuck, it was hot. <laughs> and then you said that you started cooking and now you can cook. Yeah. It was working in the kitchen is what really... Taught me how to cook, you know. Like Master Chef was like a fast track culinary school, you know. Here are the basics, and then I'm working at Salt's Cure. I'm like learning how to make a bechamel sauce, or you know, you know things like, you know, a pesto, or you know, using a wood fired grill. And I'm just working with a real chef, and he was also a fucking monster. He, people think Gordon Ramsay's angry and mean. No, work with some real chefs in L.A. Yeah. That's you know, scary. Yeah. They're animals. Was that guy famous? <laughs> did you ever work in a restaurant? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, <went, laughs> I want to hear the stories. Oh, I used I, to, I bet you were a shitty waiter. I never even made it to waiter, dude. <laughs> That's a whole fucking... To get a job as a waiter in LA, it's like a big process. A yeah. screening process. I'm too crazy to like... They wouldn't trust me. You know what I'm saying? So I was. I started as a busboy. Yeah. In the Sherman Oaks Red Lobster, which isn't there anymore. But everybody came in there. Everybody. I'm talking about David Faustino, Arsenio Hall, Sharo. Like these, I don't know, you know, Sharo is just a legendary from the 70s. Tons of actors and TV people. Yeah. And um, I used to put my arm around people and walk them to the table and go, What's going on with you today? Because I'm from Philly. And we just like did that shit, and people were like get your hands off me. <laughs> it's the first time I realized you can't touch people. And um, 
But I, yeah, there was, this was, this was fucking 30 some years ago, dude. I was the bus boy, but I, I used to work down the Jersey Shore <laughs> one summer and I was taking crabs. They were dead, thank God. And I would steam them. And I would have to steam them. And the amount of steam was fucking... You know. Oh, crab steam, too. Yeah, dude. And so I wasn't steaming them fast enough because the shore gets really busy during the high season and all this shit. The guy hated me, and he was so angry. But, like, people throw shit. <laughs> You're like Andy Milanakis and waiting. Ex- for those it, it, <laughs> exactly. And so I was like... I never was, like, front of the house as a good... Because I was always fucking around. I worked yeah. at the ABC commissary. And that's when I was really working out. So I used to get two chicken breasts, and you only allowed one chicken breast. And uh, my boss was like, you know what? That, that, that's a lot of chicken. This was the third day in a row you had double breast. Like, Who doesn't like double breast? <laughs> and so they come, I, they like watch me, and they said, you can only have one breast. And then that's when I started comedy because there was a guy there, and he, I just would joke with him all day, this really flamboyant gay guy. He was, he was like one of my angels, and he was like, you know, you should try comedy. And that's I was awesome. like, why? And he's like, because you're crazy. You're never going to make it in the real world. <laughs> just do your, advice. Sh- do your shows in front of people. You just got, and I, I'll never forget it. I was like, what? And he's like, you just sign up. And he, he kind of led me down. I always was a fan of comedy, but I didn't know any of the procedures. And he kind of showed me of how to start what an open mic yeah. is and all this shit. Maybe so, I, do you know him still? Or? No. I hope. I, he's like I've had like five different angels in my life. I talk about it, but like he was one of them just kind of. Cause I would just, I would deliver shit all day. I was, I was, I don't want to make it about me, but yeah, but I just something it's your called podcast, dude. Well, no, it's about you. Prospect Studios is down in Los Feliz, and that's where they filmed all a lot of soap operas and the big one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. I, but believe it was G H General Hospital. Yeah. Center. Maybe one line. I don't know. I think there's a couple. But Mark Teschner, shout out. He was the biggest casting director of daytime TV, and I know. If you got a soap, it was to me a soap is the hardest job in Hollywood because you have to do forty pages and you get one take, and it's like an amazing ground for training. Like the best memorization are soap actors. They party. You want to talk about going to the bathroom and doing coke? They soap people are wild. <laughs> and I was never in the soap world, but I would deliver their coffees to the set. I was literally the coffee boy, and I would deliver to Mark. And every day, I put a headshot with a new note. Um, you know, I literally go, does, does, does the show need a coffee boy? You know, like headshot. <laughs> Back in the day, we had something called Zed cards where you'd have your headshot on one and the other side, like three different poses. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Zed. So I would be like, eh, coffee or does they need a delivery boy? And, you know, and every day he's like, still nope, nope, nope. Like he just fucking never, never no. So I would just hang around the set. I would try to like run into like actors or directors and delivering their coffee, take my time setting it up. <laughs> and they liked me But they're like Dude you're so annoying and so, Yeah And so that's Cause my I then got a roommate Who was a stand in On Cheers And he stood in For Woody Harrelson He's like You gotta get Next to the star And then the star's Gonna say This is the guy I want to stand in for me And that's yeah. it So he got really cl- Close with Woody And then he was Too pushy And he said You know Woody should have A mentally challenged brother And that's me That was his Cause he looked like Woody and uh, they're like, well, Woody's character's already slow, so no. And then he bugged them so much, they fired him. Uh, <laughs> but he was a great-looking guy, and he was funny. And so he, anyway, that fucking shit was never for me anyway, because you cannot, you have to be a full-time, I know a guy that was a great actor, but he was so into his waitering job because he wanted to make money that he was a better waiter. Yeah, and I said because he worked at a really high end restaurant. And yeah, it was so much responsibility. I'm like, dude, it's a problem when you make too much money in service. You, you stop giving a fuck. Well, I mean, not if you love time. it. If you yeah. if you cannot get up and not touch a microphone that night or not audition for something, then you're not meant to do it. Like yeah. it will eat your soul. Like I've had a lot of jobs where I tried to go corporate, and the minute I had an open mic and I said I can't come in that day, they'd fire me, and I said fine, and I'd go back to living like. You know, on a couch or in my car or something. Yeah. But that's me. I was, I knew that I could never survive in that world because I was just too, I too opinionated, too emotional. I'm like, I would, I would much rather go on the street and chill and figure out how to grift money off, of, like with other homeless. Yeah. Until I got an agent. 
I did, um, you know, I, th- I feel like everyone in, in Hollywood has, you know, stories when they were really struggling. I was, oh yeah, you didn't see the jokes, but I have a snake. Um, and I knew a guy on Hollywood Boulevard who was Spider-Man from Mexico City. Yeah. Really good Spider-Man. This guy could make 300, 400, 500 bucks sometimes in a day. Why? Because he can really, like, he's really physical? He would just, he was really good at getting the tips from tourists. Okay. For pictures. Okay. So I would go down there with the snake, and he'd be Spider-Man, I'd be Snake Man. Is that a real character? No. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) It is now. So (laughs) there are pictures of us with these, you know, just Asian people, and I'm shirtless with a snake, and he's Spider-Man. And what were you pulling in? Oh, man, I made like 150 on my best day. How many hours? Like four. Not bad. That's not bad. That's livable. The the best job I ever had when I was struggling was I would sell flowers, and it was five days out of the year. Don Friesen. What's up, Don? A, A great comic, and he ran a flower truck. And so we would go to, like, Downey or Cerritos, you know, those cities, and we would stand on the median, and we would Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Easter. There was five days. I remember one day I made 412 bucks. Damn. In 1992. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Cash free. That's a lot of money now. Yeah. And I was like, it was, I was like, how do we do this every week? And he's like, it's only for certain fucking holidays. But we would just do this flower hustle. And they were eight and 10 bucks. Yeah. He would say, You're, I'm charging you eight. Charge what you want. So we could charge whatever. That's awesome. And he, and it was. So, like, that's what I learned. So, your hustle a little bit. Like well, health. yeah. Like, they talk about the gig economy. I, we were doing it then with no phones or apps, but it was, like, you know, catering. Yeah. But th- those type of jobs were killer. So, th- I respect that snake j- hustle because it's the same thing. And if there's people, if there's people and they have a pocketbook or a wallet, you just have to, have to figure out how to get that money from their wallet to your wallet. Yeah. And that's what charm and whatever. And so, you did it. But you could have probably did, you know, hustled, you know, 500 a week easily. But did you do that a lot or no? I didn't enjoy it. You didn't enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gordon Ramsay's a legend, right? He's so nice in person. Yeah, I know. It's He puts it on. He came in Assault's Care and was just like so nice. For you or just happened uh, to go there? He just happened to go there. Cause that's how big it was back in the day. We got an LA Times write-up by uh, Jonathan Gold. Mm-hmm. You ever remember? Legendary food critic. And he was in there actually, and LA Times was in there, and like, that was my first t- night in, like, back. And I'm dropping, I'm the food runner, I'm dropping off a pork chop, and I'm like, I made the LA Times my hand and half my face. Really? Yeah. So Gordon gave you love? Oh, yeah. I, the chef let me go have a scotch with him at the table. <sighs> He's like, it's fucking Gordon Ramsay, go chill. And wow. And also, I mean, the pressure. Of everyone in that kitchen. Who's the head chef there? It was uh, Chris Phelps and um, Zach. Uh, I forgot his last name. But they're animals. Chris is really nice. He was like the soft spoken one. Mm-hmm. And Zach was the one that used to throw plates and go crazy. And how, why would the place close? I think it was all that toxic environment in the kitchen. Oh. Because, you know. When I did eventually become a waiter, if you fucked up, everyone was so scared of the head chef that they would rather just not deal with the tables. Oh, I didn't. I wanted this medium rare, not well done. Okay, instead of talking to the chef, they'd be like, "Well, that's the way you're getting it because I, I can't go through it again." But you didn't cook it. No, but like, if there's anything wrong or oh, I. If, they, if someone fucked up an order, you know, instead of like the charred broccolini, you put in like the roasted carrots and this person's like, oh, I didn't want the broccolini. And you're like, oh, well, sorry, that's what you're getting now. Because no one wanted to, to admit they made a mistake in front of this guy because he would go crazy. Was it the waiter that made the mistake? The waiter. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And so like, you know, all those. And then, you know, people would stop coming because, you know, there were too many. Pro- there was no communication. I remember one time. He got so angry at the servers that he made our manager take the POS system computer out of the kitchen and put it on the front of the house floor because he didn't want to have to look at the waiters. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious. Not anything about. I mean, 
<laughs> Listen, the guy was probably brilliant at what he does. He was such a good chef. I learned so much from him. He's an animal. You know, I, there's a there's a fine line between super passionate and un. Here's what I say: passion and unnecessary toxicity. Okay, so where is that line, right? Like to me, like. You're talking to the wrong guy because if he's breaking plates over my head because I picked the wrong vegetable, that's too much. Yeah. If he's hollering at me because I fucked up, it's okay because I've been hollered at on sets by bigger and more famous people. And, I, you know, you, you, you're making a movie. I mean, this isn't a movie, but it's a high – it's his movie. Yeah. And I'm not saying you should – did he go down for toxicity or sexual assault or Well, anything? I mean, the restaurant itself started failing. So, like, you know, I'd have to wait a couple weeks to get my tips and stuff like that. Wow. And then all of a sudden, everyone wants their tips at once. No one can pay. And then there's just a max exodus of employees and whatnot. What would you make a night? I mean, on the, when I, you know, on good nights, you could make 400 bucks waiting. Plus your money. Yeah, plus the hourly. Your the tips. Hourly nothing, yeah. The tips were like 400 Four hundred, do a couple of those a week, three of those a week, you're at twelve hundred. Yeah. It's not terrible. No, but it you know, but it was only like that, like right when I started work. Right when I st came back from Master Chef, we were at our peak and then it was a full decline. The first night I worked there as food runner, this is crazy unhinged story, but the lady who was an expo before me and the expediter is the person the tickets come out, you see the tickets and then you sh you tell the chef what to fire on the grill. You tell the salad guy what to make. And then you tell, you know, the the pizza oven guy what to make. So okay. you're kind of the captain of the ship. Okay. Um, so a lot is in your hands. And, and then when the food comes out, you tell the runner what table to take it to. Okay. So Tina, this poor... What is the waitress doing? They take all the orders and put it in the POS system. They don't deliver the food? I know. I guess you're right. Cause this is I mean, I always yeah. did. Okay. But I. So they go in and what happens? Um, okay. So Tina that night, right as I'm getting, I'm training under her. She sends food to a wrong table. And the chef goes, Tina, get the fuck over here. He takes this giant ramekin, like big one. What's a ramekin? It's like a teacup sized thing that you can fill with sauce. Oh, Ramekins are normally small, but this one was like thick. Yeah, this I know one was what it is. Big, like a gravy boat. Yeah, it was like a gravy boat, and he fills it up with the cooking whiskey all to the top, and he goes, "All right, drink this and calm the fuck down." And I'm like, that, "That's never gonna help someone make less mistakes." <laughs> but it was like, did she drink it? Yeah, oh yeah. Did she like it? No, that was her last night. She quit. Was she wasted? No, but after that, I'm sure she was feeling it. Well, she was wasted after the drinking the whiskey. Yeah. So he's old school. So did he go down? He moved back to Kansas. That's where he's from? Yeah. That's why I was going for the Niners. I was like, I don't want the Chiefs. To so win. you really don't like this dude. <laughs> I liked, I like, you know, it's like I learned so much from him and I respect the hell out of him. And he started a successful restaurant in LA, which is hard to do. But like the dude had a drinking problem and he would just wow. let it affect it was just hard to work with, you know. I never left jobs just feeling like garbage before that one. So he, that was a really bad environment. It sounded terrible. I mean, yeah, making somebody drink booze, dude. Come on, it's too much. Yeah. I mean, they, they're taking it like it's the Oscars. I get it, though. He believes in his job, but you got to, like... A lot of those dudes are, are, are fucking tightly wound, like, you know. Chefs are, yeah, they're, they're, they're just right. known for being... Yeah, I mean that a little unhinged. That movie with Bradley Cooper, I mean that's all real. I mean Yeah. So but you know, they're they're artists. You, they're just artists with food, it's just a different pla uh, palette. So yeah. not I'm just saying that artists, you know, I'm not I'm not looking for a, The thing why you love that why you love artists is because they do something extraordinary. The good ones. The great ones. Sometimes the the road to get there is ugly. Oh yeah, and you know, for me, I, like I said, I mean, I put up with a lot because I appreciate. Because I think we live in a society where everybody complains too much, so it's like, to me, like I always tell people, you know, you're 
this was, you know, people complain about Steve Jobs, but he made the iPhone. Yeah. He made the iPhone. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's where we're at. I'm not, I'm not saying this guy's souffle is the iPhone, but these guys treat it like it's their own iPhone. Yeah. And so if it's a good one, it's good. But, yeah, obviously it should be healthy. Um, because, you know, you don't want that shit. But the other guy, Mario Batali, he went down for grabbing asses. Oh, shit. And he created Italy, and I still love Italy. Yeah. And I think they just let him get his cut, and they threw him out. So he was, like, you know, cornering up, like, you know, souffle women and, like, pushing them against the thing and, like, bump, you know, I don't know. He was yeah. Like, as they'd walk by, he would, like, reach for something. And, and that shit happens all the time. I'm sure, dude. I'm sure. All the time. But, like, you know, just don't do it. It's, yeah. It's 2024. Yeah. Well, I mean, you shouldn't do it anyway, no. but, like, you know, these guys, I think they, they get, they have their own, it's their own fiefdom, really. And so they think, you know, there's not going to be anything that's going to fucking fuck with them. But yeah. it's a different world now. Yeah, man. There was that other big chef from another big restaurant, Horses, that like. Oh, dude. What the fuck was oh, that? Oh, dude. That was so weird. Oh, dude. And I love that restaurant. It's really good. Let me set this up for you. This is crazy, this pod that we're talking about this. Let me set this up for you. There's. Okay, so there used to be a bookstore called Samuel French for everybody watching. It was on Sunset Boulevard, and there was one in Studio City. Okay, so if you're really a fucking a man of the pages, which I think you are, you've got the boots, you've cuffed your jeans. I'm not. I don't think it's <laughs> cosplay. I actually think you're into that stuff. But you went to UNC, so I'm a little. You might be a beer bong guy too, but you could probably have both. You might be introspective in the library though, reading a good Proust. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So <laughs> this is where you got you get all your plays. So you get like Danny in the Deep Blue Sea, and then you go your to your acting, you know, your cold reading class, and then you work on it. And that's like and then you get a book of like, you know The that, agents. The how, agent yeah, yeah, how to get an agent one on one. It gives you the twenty steps to do and all this stuff. And so that it's crazy that it's gone though. I don't I think it's abandoned or maybe it was like a it might be like a um uh, there was a little macaroon shop I think was there for a while, but it's gone. So horses was another place before. Was that. it the Pikey? It was the Pikey. Yeah, um, but it was next to Samuel French, so it was the Pikey, and the Pikey actually had comedy in the back. So I used to go there, and like if you wanted to work it out, they'd have like this comedy in the round, and it wasn't bad. And the food was great at the Pikey. It was a good vibe. It was yeah. dark. It was kind of New Yorkish. And uh, and I guess somehow uh, under my watch, I wasn't really going as much because the comedy was stopped. But I go for the food once in a while. It turned into horses. And then I guess this fucking insanely fucking gross, weird story happened. And now it's shut down. But tell us what happened. Man. This was a this was a highly amazing like like everyone goes there. And they still do. Is it open again? Yeah, it's been. It, it never they, closed? I think, yeah, I think that guy either is gone or. So it, I would see it because I'm like, that's not horses. That's the pikey. And they're like, no, it was like a really hard ticket to get. And it was the, like the burger was the best. The fucking, po the dirty fucking pasta, whatever. That vodka pasta. Whatever. Yeah. All this shit. And it's annoying TikTokers doing it, but they actually found a good place. Yeah. So this guy, tell, tell him what happened. This is crazy. Didn't he, like, get caught killing kittens? The story is that his wife, like, he was married, I think. You'll tell me. And he, this is fucking disgusting. He would be jerking off. <coughs> he would be jerking off as he's strangling a kitten. It's fucking insane. <coughs> Is that the story? I think that's the story. I'm pretty sure that's the story. I mean, it's disgusting. It's e it's evil. It's fucking. It's disgusting. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't even know. I hate that we even talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> I brought it up. You're good. <laughs> like how far? That guy's a serial killer. That guy. Yeah. That guy. Where is, is he at? I think he's just Voldemort or something. Is he I, in jail? I hope so. You should go away for life for that. For real, dude. He's for, fucking yeah. not only killing animals, he's killing kittens. Like the epitome of like 
cuteness. Yeah. Yes. And that's the, I'd have to look it up. But I don't like, once I heard, I'm like, that's fuck. I never went to that place. Yeah. I never would go there again. I thought it was closed, but I wouldn't go there. I don't want to go there now. Yeah. How do they open? The food is really, really good. Dude! <laughs> is it Tony, his recipes? We were talking about the correlation of passion and but that's, toxicity. That's, ins- that's insane. Yeah, that is, that is crazy. I mean, I can't imagine that it was... Maybe it's not true. That's true. He's gone. Yeah. I mean, I did see it in like TMZ or something. But that doesn't mean it's true, but... But his wife found him like either he had videos or something. I don't yeah. know. I'm sure somebody, somebody will say something in the comments, but that's just, dude, that's just sick. It's crazy. But the, I'm I'm talking about like not that. That's next level psychosis, and that's like you know the psychosis. It's evil. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't feel safe with that guy in the house. But I wouldn't even want to eat their food now because how do I know I don't have a fucking kitten, fucking dead kitten on it, or, or his. <laughs> yeah. Who knows what he put in sauce? Like his fucking <laughs> goo. Like, oh, Jesus. Uh, but what I'm saying is like this. It's like, here's an example. Oh, I can say this. So like the other night during the bowl, the Super Bowl, uh, Travis Kelsey, you know. Oh, yeah. You don't touch Andy Reid. Andy Reid is like Santa Claus. Yeah. And he's now having this beautiful run. He's got this brilliant mind he's got this brilliant savant right there and he's this old sage it's the perfect mix of like really shows you it's like if you want a good stock advisor get an old man who's yeah. been through it all and if you're young money you know same thing you want to learn about football an old coach with a young brilliant mind yeah right? it's brilliant so and travis is also his own amazing brilliant thing but you know listen there's a lot I can say. I think the guy's as cool as the other side of the pillow. I love the way he plays. I'm not even a sports head, but Travis Kelsey is a superstar. And he fucking had some crazy ass rage mid game and he got caught on camera. Yeah. Just fucking here's the thing. Yelling. He the yelling scary. The, yeah, but I mean listen, that's the, here's the thing. This is where this fine line is. I think because he bumped Andy. I don't know if it was on purpose or not. If it was intentional, that's fucked up. But if it was like an accident, okay. But he was yelling, but that that's the same guy you want to rip the ball out of the air and yeah. through people to get a fucking touchdown to make a the most watched billion dollar bowl. Yeah. You know you what need, I mean? You need that guy. So you want an animal. You want a guy who's a fuck. He's a Viking. Testosterone. Beyond. Yeah. Off the fucking Off the charts. Chart. Yeah. He's got a, the hottest woman in the world in the stands. Fucking, you know, fucking being his cheerleader. I mean, he, he's it's and he's from Ohio. It's gangster. Yeah. You know, I respect Ohio. So he comes in and he's fucking a Viking. And his brother's a Viking. You know, but. I believe they are good-hearted guys. I don't know anything about them. They seem sweet, but in that moment, you know, there's also a Pfizer thing, and you know, I'm not a big fucking big pharma guy, but whatever. <laughs> That's another whole pot I don't want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. But you know, they could say that he look. At the end of the day, he's in an insane environment, and he lost his cool. My thing is, if he intentionally, I don't know if he kind of jail bumped him or not. Like I felt like he, if he tripped, I looked like he could have either tripped into him. Yeah. Well, I think it's or hard you, to also get off the field when you're being so physical and yeah. being so, and then all of a sudden you're just on the sidelines. I'm sure it's hard to just turn it off. Dude, I have I have multiple examples of that, of like, yeah. It's comedy. Like, well, yeah, like. But <laughs> you, I, you say a joke, you're not on stage, and it does not last. Well, I want to finish the thought, though. So I, he, I hope he didn't hit him. I'd have to really study the tape. But it looked like he kind of bumped him by accident. I'm hoping it was. And Andy forgave him, and they forgave him. And it's their own thing, and they have their own code in there. So, But, but if it, it was anyone else. If it was a younger guy, he was just so fucking passionate and mad. So it's like that was right on the edge of, like, to me, competitive spirit and over the line. But, again, yeah. I wasn't there. I'd have to really study the tape. I'm not trying to judge the dude. Because everything was fine. But it, if he was like, fuck you, old man. That's, <laughs> yeah. you can't do I mean, that ain't right, bro. No. But dude. I don't know. He might have stumbled. I also thought he just grabbed him and be like, look, dude, put me in the fucking game. Yeah. But 
But he's, but I mean, you can't. You can't expect it's the National F- Felon League. I'm not saying he is, but you, <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah. expect these guys to be perfect all the time, no or else they'll be way. shitty football players. Dude, yeah. he's a charming dude. He was in the heart of the passion. I mean, afterwards, he's charming again. Yeah, just, he got the dub. I mean, he didn't hurt anyone, but it, you know, to the non-playing person, it's comedy is not football. But here's an example. I came off stage one time. I come off stage a lot, and I'm hot. Like, if I come off a hot set, and, and people will come up to me and go, Hi, Jamie, can I take a picture? Or and they get right in my space. And it's like, you got to give me a second to fucking chill down. You got to feel. And it's not football. It's not the Super Bowl, but it's it's hot, man. It's fucking hot. Or you do a fucking scene, and it's hot. People got to give you the moments. And I think that if they don't give you your space... I know for myself, it's like, just give me, that's why it's like when I do like the other night at the lab to get from the stage to the green room. Now it was chill at the end. So it was fine. I was yeah. all real chill. I was taking pictures with you and other people and it was great. It was actually a really good ending to the show, but to get to that upstairs is hard during a normal night. And actually it wasn't crazy because there was another show coming in but I don't want to go upstairs because it's a new show. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to vegetate with people yeah. that understand it. I'll go take a second. Yeah. So that's how it is in comedy. But like that, they moved the room out. So that way no one was really hanging anyway. Yeah. Because you just need a moment. I'm sure. After you've had a hot totally, set, you understand man. what I'm saying. Chill down with some Pollo Loco. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Chill out after a fucking hot karaoke set. <laughs> how did that come off? Really good. It did? Yeah. We sold it? Yeah. My partner, Shane, he shout out Shane. He he killed it. Yeah. He did, he did the other. I mean, it was my song, but I don't remember all the words from the beginning, so I did. I got the chorus. You got the chorus. Yeah. Circle, circle. Man, we were talking about fucked up restaurant shit. Um, yes. Go for it. This one's a little lighter, but it's still really fucked up. But uh, there was a guy who was worked at Whole Foods. Did you hear about this? Making the smoothies? No, but before you do, I used to live, I live around the corner from Gwen, and I used to go to Gwen a lot. Do you like Gwen? Really good meat. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a chill guy, right? Yeah, sustainably butchered. Okay, good. Um, locally sourced. Okay. That's a good, that's a good spot. All right, so go ahead with the Whole Foods guy. This dude had a habit of, like, coming in women's smoothies for some reason. He liked that. And so he came in this one woman smoothie in this woman was a sleuth because she was like there's cum in this <laughs> she detected the cum <laughs> yo snitch somehow, on yourself snitch on yourself dot com so, dot com so somehow they tested it for cum and found out his semen was in there and so this I don't know this woman needs like a prize or something is, when did this happen? This happened like... Dude, that's the worst nightmare of all time. Like a year and a half ago? No! Yeah. I mean, this is going to sound terrible. I'm sorry. Is that what... Was he handsome? Or was he a disgusting fat pig? I mean... I'm not saying it's all... None of it's good, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I want to know the same thing. Hold on. So he's... Oh, God. Wait, that's like the worst scenario. So what you think about... Where? Where are they making the smoothies? Isn't it in front of you? I guess he took it in the back real quick for just a little extra seasoning on and top. And where? I don't know which Whole Foods this was at. And he jerk off in a cup or yeah. right in the right in the drink. Maybe I don't know. I need to know the details before I bring these six. No. Up. Um. Yeah, but she fucking she knew it was cum so first wh- sip. <laughs> God damn, bro! She could have got fucking HIV. Really? I don't know. Maybe yeah. I would think. Maybe. Maybe the ginger killed it, but yeah. dude, see that's something you could get. <laughs> I mean, if you have a had a cut in your mouth or something. Yeah, you don't know. or a fucking baby grows in your stomach. But yeah. how? Bro, so when did this happen? A year and a half ago? Something like that. Yeah. I mean just fucking crazy. So what happened? Is he in jail? I think he probably went to jail. I think What's that crime? <laughs> I don't know. Dude. <laughs> yeah, what, what and what did crime? she do? How many other women drank his fucking 
He's probably Sm- been doing it for years. Smooth. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Was he yeah. doing it to guys? I don't know. So wait, you come off Top Chef. Does it help you with your career? I mean, right now I'm trying to figure out a way where I can make food and comedy kind of work together. So I was talking to you about this new thing I'm doing where I'm having comedians come on, show me a recipe they like to cook. It's not all, It's like cooking for bachelors, you know. It's uh, cooking to make her forget you don't have a bed frame, you know. Recipes like that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You do that on stage? Um, no, but you I should. I should. Good joke. Yeah. Yes. Recipes so, to make her forget you don't have a bed frame. <laughs> how often? How long have you been doing comedy? I'd say like seven years. Seven years, and you do it pretty hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. I how mean, many nights a week do you get up? Probably like three or four. Yeah, I mean, would you? Cause are you on the open mic circuit, or are you above that now? I am at the point where I have, you know, friends who work at the comedy store saying, "Dan, you got to not do as many open mics. Uh, you got to not take these bad shows." I mean, I'll do any. Well, you're show. working it all. Yeah, well, I do all types of shows. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, that's that's what I kind of say too. Like, what I like is, you know. I have a couple locals, like, you're always on this one poster at uh, one of my favorite kind of open mic bar shows, the Dime poster. <laughs> it's always me, you, and like eight chicks in bikinis. On the Do you road. know the joke with that, right? <laughs> no, how'd it start? Um, well, the funny thing is, is like, I started going there in like 2016, my buddy Adam, who's amazing, he has it, and I was like, He's like, you know, if you want to just work, because I never worked out in town. A lot of people didn't. We would make our money and take off, and then the week we would take off, and then we'd go back out. But something happened with social media, and then everybody started doing in-town shows, because town never paid yeah. you. Um, but now you can get paid in town. So he's like, just come in and, you know, work your shit out here. So I was like, okay. So I went in one time, and it was like a whole different scene. It was like all these like young like, you know, upcoming people that I didn't really know. And then, you know, I'm going to give myself a little love. I think when I, I, no one went there that I knew of before it went. Then then after I did it, I'm not going to say anything, but Burr showed up. Marlon Wayne showed up. Dave Chappelle showed up. So I'm just saying, Adam, I feel like (laughs) I I blessed the room. I'm pretty sure I did it before those guys. But anyway, so now it's a staple. Like you go in, it's Adam's room. Yeah. And you just, it's one of those places where I can just pop in and do some time and, you know, he'll let me. And it's tough. Some, it's, it's amazing, but sometimes it's just all comics, which is, which is tough, even if you're known or not, because you, you know, they're going to be a tougher crowd. Definitely. But, um, the vibe is great. Such a great vibe. And he's awesome. He's, you know, he's my boy and, and the, the comics are sweet. You know what I mean? There's a lot of young, cool comics there. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is that I haven't shown up forever. Because I'm too, I'm out of town a lot of times, and so t- just uh, he posted it today from South Africa. He's literally on a safari, <laughs> and he posts a poster, and it's just now me with like you're on every post with seven chicks. I know and you sometimes. I'll throw on Jeff Die. He'll mix it up, and it's hilarious. And I'm like, dude, you know I'm not going. And he's like, at this point, he goes, I, I, he goes, at this point you have a residency. <laughs> so I just laugh. Because he uses me on it. And you never know. I might pop in um, when I got nothing going on. And I, I got, sometimes I'm just out of town. Or if I if I have two shows that night, it's hard for me to go there. But It's Tuesday, yeah. But if I can go in late night and pop on like 1130, I'll do that. But he always just puts me on. And uh, and it's now it's just become like this funny gag. Yeah. But I do go there. It's such a great, it's a great room. It's a great location. Um. Yeah, that's, I want to set up a show like that, you know, like where it's half comics, but also like a natural audience. Like it's got a good neighborhood draw. Yeah, it's great. You, you gotta, yeah, you're so, has, so have you gone on for any more reality shows or? Mm-mm. I had a, uh, booked my first couple commercials last year. Okay, that's Yeah, good. which was awesome. Um. You know, it's kind of like, I think it's a lot like once you get good at comedy, the acting becomes a little easier. Mm-hmm. 
It's definitely true, um, dude. It's definitely true. And like my first real audition where like I just nailed it was because I'd been doing roast battles at the comedy store and I went into the audition. And he was like, all right, Christmas break. This is your brother and his fiance. Roast them. Okay. And that was my audition. For a show, a TV show? It was a commercial. And you got, what was it for? Yeah, it was BMW. So you got it? Yeah. Wow. So that's good money, dude. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty good. I mean, I was cut out of the first one, but the second one, they just booked me without an audition because yeah. they liked what I did on the first one. So di- just so everyone's watching, this is, you're a real example of a, uh, what can I say? trying to now you're becoming a working actor you know what i mean you do have other jobs but like you work in restaurants you've been on tv you've been blessed by reality tv almost won you got commercial you have your sag card you know you've so you have an agent i have a commercial agent you have a commercial agent but you're still grinding i mean that you are a poster boy of what it's like Thanks, man. Well, because people say like, "Oh, I'm an actor and stuff," but they don't haven't done anything, and you yeah. don't even really put that stuff on your social media, and you're actually doing it. So that's why I respect you, Appreciate even man. though I don't know you, because that's how it should be. It should be like you're trying to do it. Yeah, you're I'm not going to call myself something unless I'm getting paid for it. But you are. Yeah. You know, now, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so what is your like? Because were you working at Pump? I was at Pump. Yeah, bartending the last three years why did they close that down man it's crazy the rent went up to like eighty thousand dollars a month how why because it's i they had been feuding with lisa vanderpump and their restaurant with the landlord there was you know we got shut down for like half a month in april what what could they make them a, a, a night there uh i don't know but we were doing really really well at the end just because we were closing down, you know, it's like eighty thousand a month is insane for that corner. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's a killer corner. I mean, that's just crazy, dude. That's too much. No, she shouldn't have paid it. Yeah, she moved out. So you were make what were you making there if you were making a night? I mean, on the good nights, like Saturday night, five hundred bucks, and then brunch. I would be the only bartender for a little bit, so I make five hundred brunch. And you're pulling, or you're getting pulled. By some, like, you know, haggard divorcee? Uh, I mean, I had a girlfriend most of the time I was working there, and I, like, really passed up some... And you kept it legit? Kept it legit. Good for you. But there was, like, you know, a couple months I was single, and, like, I remember one time, like, this, you know, there was a divorcee in from Arizona. And they, they're they animals. Yeah, when I talk they're about animals. Pump, people who don't know what pump is, I always say, well, it's kind of like a gay Chuck E. Cheese for white women, you know? <laughs> That's two, that's two times. <laughs> that's like you know. That's, that's how so describe true. It. I don't know why you had the Chucky part in it because that's like younger. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. Gay it's, it is kind of like it's, it's kind of not terrible. It's kinda, yeah, you're right. It is kind of the food like, is yeah. like okay. I never um, had the food there. I never been to a pump. Yeah, well, you're not missing much, but stop it. Um, <laughs> this lady came in and she was very attractive and. We flirted for like four hours, and she was like, all right, I have to go. And I was like, all right, well, let me just say goodbye. So I went out around the side of the bar, and we started making out right as like where the right runners there. come out of the kitchen. What year was this? This was like a year ago. Now, you don't, are you vaccinated? Yeah. Oh, okay. So do you believe in that? I don't know. <laughs> I know you had to be vaccinated to get into a bar a year ago, so of course I got it. You got to fake that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, so you made out with her? She was probably vaccinated. Yeah, that's how crazy I am, bro. That I, I don't think I would ever. I mean, I got a girl, but if I didn't, I don't know if I would make out with a vaccinated chick. Is that crazy? No, I have to oh, talk wait. to my doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta make sure I'm okay. So you're making out with her? Yeah, and I remember the, uh, the food runners coming out of the kitchen, <laughs> and we were like really making out, hardcore. Yeah. And Are I, you sauced? Do you drink? I was pretty sauced. So you're saucing on the job. Always. And they allow you to do that. They encourage it probably. Cause you're well, getting- I mean, as long as you do your job well, you can't get sauced and be dropping glass or something. But I never broke glass. Because this is like the way uh, it's been. But I'm curious because how it is now with all the... 
Like that's the way it would be normal. Yeah. In so the 90s. she did she yeah, I mean that's the way it's always been. Bartenders always, will always drink with you, especially if you're cool. But like I'm saying, like when the chick rolls up, you make out with her, but in the new post Me Too world and stuff and the fucking camera phone's a little dicier. But I'm in a different position than you are. Was dicey, but so I knew she, that I was like in She a was corner. on your she was on your dill. Yeah. So she rolled up, who made the move? She probably did. Uh, it was a mutual thing. We a mutual. So I was like, I got to say goodbye. So you said goodbye, you hug her, and then... Boom. Well, I made sure it was in a spot where the cameras couldn't really see us. Gotcha. I mean, I definitely my boss has seen me kiss a girl at work. Yeah. But it was that sounds midnight. shady, but it's not. He was just trying to, you know, have privacy. Yeah. It was... Just it was, it was uh, what's the word? Consensual. Consensual, yes. What's uh, that word? That <laughs> sounds terrible. Is that a word? Go ahead. What's the word that means... Uh, so we're, we were making out in the... Um, I just remember the... I, Someone came out of the kitchen. I look up just to make sure it's not my boss. And it was the food runner. He looks at me and goes, Dan, I want to be you when I grow up. And I was like, dude, thanks. I just, <laughs> so what happened? I never saw her again, but she's, I follow her on Instagram. She told me she's going to be back in LA in March. It's a 38 minute flight. Nice. Well, why? Wait, why didn't you guys ever hang? Why didn't you hang out that night? Well, she was going to the Abbey and I just don't really like the Abbey. I know, but she had a hotel. Yeah. What happened? Why didn't that happen? Was she f wasted? She was pretty wasted, but I still, I mean, I would have been fine with it, but she was going to the Abbey, and I just, have you been in the Abbey before? I've been in the Abbey multiple yeah, times. It's, it's sensory overload, especially yeah. if, like, your work, like, you know, for Pride, when I've, I've bartended the last three Yeah, prides. they're going to, they're going to. They're your bait over there. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna. Take and also, you. when people ask me to go, I'm like, no, I work that. Yeah, you work. You don't want to. You don't want to go hang out where your job is. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's like you. You want to go hang out in the ABC commissary. You're like, no, I have terrible. Plus, memories guys with life. leather straps right here are gonna start dancing in front of you. Oh and yeah, they're gonna think you want to dance. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. You got the short hair, bro. I, I yeah no I, I could pass for yeah. This first question every time I'm at the bar: Are you straight or gay? I'm like, doesn't matter, dude. What do you want? <laughs> And that's my answer, so I'll figure it out. <laughs> so, <laughs> everybody does their own thing. So, <laughs> yeah. so, all right. I mean, I guess that story was, you had an Arizona cougar and you kind of let her go. I did. I mean, there was one, one woman I met who was a writer on CSI and this, I had a girlfriend at the time and I still regret this because, oh, you know, shit. she could have opened up some doors for me, man. I hope your girl doesn't see this. Go ahead. Your ex-girl. Oh, I don't know. I hope not either. But, well, I made the right move. But she invited me. She was like, hey, Dan, I'm going to this shibari party. What's that? It's this Japanese sex thing where you they use leather. They, you get tied up in leather straps, I guess. You just outed this lady, bro, CSI writer. You just said a CS writer does this. <laughs> no, no. It could have been Criminal Minds. It was oh, one of the my two. God. Don't say that. I was on that show. <laughs> just say a procedural. No, um... Anyway, yeah, it was just, yes. A procedural. Please, yeah, edit that out, whatever. So what um, happened? And so, yeah, I, I had no idea what shabari was, and she was like, I'm going to the shabari party. You know? Shabu shabu is soup. So, yeah, there's probably that there, too. No, it's soup. You put meat in the soup. Shabu shabu? That's Japanese soup. This That's is that, shabari. That sounds very close, but very different. Yeah, oh, yeah, very. And uh, I guess, like, you know, you can, like, it's some type of, you know, tying up sex thing but i could have tied her up and like you know maybe spanked her with one of those whips or something i feel like i really messed out she invited you and said this is what it's gonna be yeah i don't think you i don't think you made a bad call there <laughs> yeah. why does she have to go and do that the person who edits this as as, as a shout out to the person that edits this pod <laughs> yes yeah, sorry kyle. sorry kyle this is for kyle are you ready can anyone just come anymore? <laughs> yeah. This is what he says all the time. He's like, can't people just come? I mean, apparently they can, but in a smoothie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why do people, I mean, just catch your nut and go. Like, like you're so relaxed when you catch your nut. Yeah. Why do people have to do all this other bullshit? Yeah, maybe. maybe because they're not living their life. Like, to me, my life is pretty busy. It's a wild. I've, I've been very fortunate. You know, if I catch a nut. Fine. I just want to have some carbs yeah. and just watch TikTok. I don't need to be hanging from the ceiling. To, yeah. You know. What is that? I don't know, man. And it's not 
It's not like, yeah, it's, I don't want to say it's a generational thing because there's like freaky people in all generations. But, yeah. Um, yeah. As someone, because you could be on pump, stay with the generation thing, but I would say, you could be on pump, but you have no desire to? I just, I mean, I kind of like, I haphazardly said in an application when they were hiring new bartenders for the next show, just because I have reality experience. And yeah, like, dude, you could do it. Yeah. And like, I bartended with, you know, people from the show and I'm I'm fast bartender. You drink? Yeah. I'm trying to cut down. Yeah, you, you drank the other night, dude. I was like, but you were pretty eff effective. But at one point, you drank, I was like, yo, where's Dan? Because I was going to dap you up. And the other dude was like, oh, he's out here. So you bounced. I don't know where you went, but you were not at your post. <laughs> <laughs> you went somewhere in Monica's house. That's all I know. <laughs> It was probably eating another burrito. He was probably <laughs> might have been in the pool house. I don't know, yeah. but the reports from the party were all great. So yeah, um, I don't know. Um, but do you? Because like real, everything is so mixed now. You know, Hollywood, in my opinion, is done. Really, it's different. It's not done traditionally the way it is done, but a lot of normal people. Streaming changed. Mostly, well, also right? transparency, fucking people, Hollywood preaching to the normal man. Um, you know, the era of '90s movies is over. Unfortunately, a great example of this is in I want to say Greensboro. I want to say Greensboro. I want to say I'm not going to give too much, but it was a comedy club, and the waitress is there when the Me Too happened. I'll never forget it in Greensboro, North Carolina. And they told me the amount of shit that they put up with. And they were so, they're like, these actresses saying this shit. They go, do you know the amount of shit I put up with? <laughs> and they were beautiful waitresses and hardcore. Like, you know, I love North North Kakalaka. But, you know, I'm sure there's some parts of it, you know, truck stops and oh, yeah. different diners that... But to me, is. you know, there's a fine line between the southern of like, hey, honey, can I have some more of that butter? And hey, sweetie, psh, smack in the ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So th they were just basically saying like they didn't love their life, but they kept going and they want to get better. But they, they were just saying what, what they put up with was and it both can be true. And it's they didn't love it, but they just lost respect because they felt like, bitch, you don't know what the real women are putting up. With. Yeah. And, and, you know. They they wanted their situation to be better, so it's like, what are you crying about? Like, start with us. Yeah. Don't complain from a private jet, which is it's, it's all that all needs to be helped. But Hollywood, in the sense, is different because not just streaming. It's like you know, you can't suck a dick to get a part anymore if you do want to. I think that's still <laughs> on the table. Yeah, really. I think it's still on the table. Look at that. You believe in numbers, Dan? Oh shit. Three, three, three. Right when he said "suck a dick," <laughs> you're like, "This is the real reason I brought I you." I mean, over. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but I feel like that's happening in the comedy community. Oh yeah, don't you have to say anything? But I feel like there's some. I think there's a fucking deal on both sides. The dick that's getting sucked and the mouth that's sucking it. Am I oh, wrong yeah. about that? I think you're right. I mean, sometimes you see pay for plays. You see, yeah, you see lineups, and you're like, I don't really understand why this person's on. You know what I mean? I love that you said it because <laughs> I always tell people the the you know the cutest young ingenue when I started out comedy was me. You know what I mean? That was comedy was a freak show, <laughs> and now it's like full of like you know attractive people, men and women. It was like just never was that and. You know, some of it are influencers that got attention and they're like, oh, I'm a genius. And then other are people yeah. like you that are just, you know, you're an attractive guy, but you're also, you really do. You read, you fucking put in the work. Yeah. You are funny. Right you jokes. Me, yeah, you made me laugh twice on this pod. So, and you like, you went to this party the other night. There was a lot of ballers there. You fit right in. You oh, know what true. I mean? So it's like. There are people that naturally will, water seeks its own level that you will come to. But then there's others that feel like like the fact that you did a BMW commercial, you know, I didn't know about it. And there's other people saying what they are, but they don't have any credits. It just tells me a lot. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. But so, I just say Hollywood is it's it's just I feel like people don't respect it as much as they do. And there's a lot of weird shit that people are talking about. 
Now, again, how weird? I don't know. It's like, have I seen the super weird shit? No, but I've always been a guy that was like, you know, I got famous because I did stuff, not because I got famous, because I did stuff and fame was a by proxy. And of yeah. course, I went to, you know, MTV Awards and hang out with Maxim Chicks and, you know, after parties. It was great. But it wasn't anything weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I feel like even that now would be gone because there was no phones that were taking pictures back then. I know. So I it was like, the phones. I didn't, I, you can look up pictures of me back in the day then and you'll see like this, but it's grainy and it's like I'm with some Maxim chick and, you know, or my buddy and the MTV and we're all just laughing. MTV used to be so cool, man. There was just, MTV was the shit. Spring break, bro. Can you imagine oh going down? God. Could you imagine going down to Florida for five days on MTV's dime? Oh, man. With a bunch of ramped up fucking frat heads. And you're in your late twenties, and MTV throws you in the middle of it, and you're like the fucking spokesperson for MTV Spring Break. That's so sick. Yeah, <laughs> that's like my dream. Exactly. As a little, little kid, it yeah. is the greatest time. Now can't do that. I mean, you'd be scared, right? With the fucking pictures and clout, and people said, "Oh, I did this, and I hooked up with blah blah," and well, everything is photographed now. Like Travis Kelsey, like we were talking oh, about. He was just caught in a, in a moment of passion, you know? Exactly. Every think, phone can just manipulate any moment. Yeah. Again, like I said, if he actively did it, I don't think he actively meant to hurt the guy. He didn't even hurt the guy. But exactly, they can manipulate it. So it's like, here's the weirdest thing, though, I think of this whole shit. And it goes back to what you were saying the other night. It's like, well, the first thing I got to remember, I, remind me of what you talked about with the party, but was, uh, is this clout shit. To me, it was like you're just trying to make yourself look good. I hate the term clout because I guess clout chaser is where it started. Yeah. But but you want to make yourself look good, and people are so desperate for importance, and fame is a determinator of some type of importance, I guess. that It is. That people will do anything to associate themselves with something that's popular so they look cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. Which is, I guess, clout. Yep. And, you know, that's your whole jam, dude. And so if you're hooking up and you're famous off MasterChef, well, back in the day, you would have just, you know, hung with that chick. You would have met her at her hotel later. Everything would have been fine. Or you might have hooked up with her in the bathroom. You know what I mean? Everyone's having a great time. Um, and now... Someone taking a picture. They can even say, I saw him go in, tell the story to TMZ or whatever. And if you have any modicum of fame, they're just going to fucking run with that. Yeah. And if the chick is, she, she she should be cool, right? Everyone's cool, but you're drunk, right? So it's like, if, it, if, 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 if revisionist history happens and it's like, oh, I don't remember, I don't remember that going that way. I mean, I don't want to say... I don't There's that. a bigger gray area now because everyone has a phone. I, you got to just believe the person who took the picture. Yeah. And what's happening in that picture. You don't know. Like Travis Kelsey, you know, maybe he just bumped into the guy. But, yeah. like, he looks so angry that people are like, oh, he's not as good of a guy as I thought. Yeah. Because this one moment of passion was yeah. recorded. Exactly. And exactly. everything's recorded now. Dude, I know. I can tell you. There's a restaurant I used to have a little piece of. And um, we all, everyone had a piece of it back in the mid 2000s, and it was awesome. And we would go there, and there was a huge leg. I can't, I can't think of this at all now. It's so funny to me. A lot of stuff happened there that was all a lot of fun, and everybody had a great time. I actually do think one of the owners is in jail now for fraud, because <laughs> I don't know. So much better mind. than strangling a kitten. Yeah, right? so exactly. much cooler. Jesus brought that Just fraud. On. Come on, <laughs> You're like, can you stop? <laughs> And I don't want to put people on blast, but there's a legendary actor, I'll never forget this, who doesn't really age. And he's probably, he was in his, maybe fucking early 60s, maybe 61, but he looks like he's 31. Damn. And he had a fine ass, like, 27-year-old. And I'm with my boy, and we're having a fucking huge ass dinner, you know, one of those dinners, a bunch of different people. Yeah. Chicks and whatever, and we're about, it was pre-club and night. You know what I mean? This is like what I'm saying. Like, if I'm in town now, I'm usually either doing comedy or something. But back then, you had already 
I was already touring and doing so much that you never went in town to work out. And town paid you two, two bucks. Now town became like clout. Yeah. Which is would never. So on my nights off, I would take off, you know. And um, we were having this huge party, like just at our table. And there was different tables of different actors. And this one dude was making out so hard with this chick. And he was just going in it. And we're just laughing like, yo, look at fucking. Can't do that. Our boy over here. Yeah. And it was funny. And the chick was into it. He was into it. It was right in the booth of the of spot. And I didn't think anything of it. No one took a phone out. Yeah. You know what I mean? This was probably 05. And in today, that shit would be fucking. Front page. Yeah. Like, like the guy was just enjoying himself. He was probably recently divorced. And, and I just think that that's the bitch ass society we live in. So that's why everything is so different. Yeah. But Hollywood is different also because they used to get $20 million if you were a movie star up front. But now they can run the numbers. P- movie theaters are different. Even huge fucking stars are making things straight to streaming. So it's just like a risk of not so much box office, but how many subscribers we can get. So it's, Crazy. it's just all different. And, tech, you know, Mr. Beast could be bigger than most people now. You know what I mean? So it's all all bets are off. It's everywhere, but also Hollywood's luster is different. Yeah. I mean, do you feel that as you, as a person? <sighs> or do you still I mean, think it's the spot? Know, I've only been here 10 years, but... it's a long time, Dan. Comedy in New York's pretty fucking awesome from what I hear. Philly comedy is great, too. I mean, Yes, that's different. That's the comedy yeah. scene. Yeah. Oh, Hollywood itself? I definitely think times have changed. And I, you know what I'm going to miss is the days of getting flashed by chicks. When, Never, were, when were those... I mean, for me, like 2006 through like 2010, because even if you did flash them, we had Samsung phones. It's not like you're going to get a good, that's going to be you're all just, green. Oh, you just busted yourself, though. You were like 16 when it started. Yeah. <laughs> 17. I was born in 89, baby. <laughs> so wait. You so flashed in high school. Okay. So, but you can't do that anymore. Well, that was girls gone wild. That's how it was for us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because like, you know, well, also... I, I remember just being in cars with my buddies and being like, flash us. And like girls would maybe flash. Now that's never going to happen because no one wants their boobs on camera. No it's a wants- felony now, Dan. Yeah. You just admitted to flashing, but you didn't make them. You said it. Yeah. See, that to me is innocent. <laughs> I don't even know what I admitted to, but it's, it's I just scary. feel like, you know, and you know, I used to like, I've only been to like one party where like everyone was topless, but that was like, 10 years ago and it would never happen now because like why were they all topless it was just one of those parties man pool party it was like a pool party that just got really fun okay so it got that they didn't start topless no okay yeah well that happened. It wasn't like harold and kumar yeah one scene. <laughs> which one the first where, one where, where he's like doing up and he's like yeah everyone does topless parties i'm doing a bottomless party which one was that? Was that the I first? I think it was the first one. Yeah, and then he gets out of the hot tub and he's got like a, the biggest bush ever. I forget that scene. I I wasn't in that scene. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you say bush? Yeah. Do you know anything about me with that movie? Um, which uh, which part were you in? I'm just gonna say it was equated to a bush. Okay. Feel bad I didn't. You know I loved you in uh, Romeo and Juliet. Thank you. You didn't have to know. Thank you. I appreciate that. I started MGK, the pink hair. Oh yeah, you did. You did. I did. That movie was sick. Thank you, buddy. But the Howard and Kumar Bush. There's a reference there. I'll let the people in the comments. Oh no, I'm gonna get shredded <laughs> in the comments <laughs> like eighty times. <laughs> no, but you were saying this about this in Hollywood. I was gonna ask you something. I was fucking forgot. We were, oh, here's what I wanna. We started this way, and this is probably where we could wrap here. Is that you really liked to party the other night, and you really? I was kind of sad. I was laughing, but you wasn't. You weren't joking. Like you, your generation would be doing coke in a bathroom, and do people talk? In no, their early and then 30s? like a lot of people are just on their phones. I mean, not being boring, right? Yeah, no personality. Just on their phones, just... But what if they're twitching? Don't they twitch? I don't, not really. I don't see a lot of twitching. 
But I just feel like, you know, I've gone to parties where, like, you know, there's 10 people in the bathroom the whole time. And you're like, where's the party? And everyone's just in a room somewhere doing drugs. And you're like, this is kind of lame. And then did they come out and party after? Yeah, I guess. But, like, some people just never, if there's drugs at the party, they just never leave the drugs. I dated a girl like this who just, <sighs> you know, I'm like, you know, do a little bit, but come dance with me. Yeah. Don't be in the kitchen the whole time. You know, um, that's when you have a problem. Yeah. Because people, I had one actor, I'm not going to say his name, he's a legend, but he said, you know, I was always the guy that was always, people were hanging out with four girls or whatever, and I was always the guy trying to do coke with the fat chick in the bathroom. You know, and that's, but what's funny is, I, you know, whether you believe this or not, I've never done coke, but I've always seen it. And I never saw it until I came to L.A. Um, I think so. I'm pretty sure that's true. And um, I just remember one. This is one of my best Coke stories is that because you're saying this and it kind of bums me out. Like the my body, like um, I guess it goes off now, that spot on um, Sunset and Doheny. What's that club? Doheny Room? No, it's another club up there. It's been uh, going forever. Laurel Hardware? No, up on, on Sunset. Rock and Rallies? No. Is Rock and Rally still going or is it closed? Yeah, dude, I got a job interview this week. Do you? Over there, yeah. If it, It's a great, that's one of my favorite spots. Yeah, I got to, the second interview. They, they You'll kill it there. Yeah. Um, there's a club there, I forget, but it used to be banging, I'm sure. Oh, the Rainbow Room. No, no. past it. Across from Boa. It's a club. Anyway, my buddy used to really, that club was, I think it still goes off, but I haven't gone forever. I can't see myself sitting at a club. I haven't drank. I don't like clubs. Yeah, but this club would be banging. And so, I don't know, one night, I think it was um, the Dougie, the guy who did the Dougie was there and he was performing live. And oh, was, that's sick. It was sick. And it was like, it closed at two, but we would get there till three. And then there was an after party up the hill. And the after party was just amazing. Just like so many, so many women, and the dudes that were there were cool, and I'll never forget this. This is a, this chick goes like this, hot, taller than me. She's like Altoid, and she opens it, and I look down, and she's like this, and puts a straw at me, and she goes Altoid, and I'm like, no, I go yeah, and I'm about to take it, and I realize it was Coke, and I was like, no, I don't need that, and she goes. Okay, your breath's great. And then she just walked away. And then another chick, I went into the closet to grab a coat, and a chick was in there. And she goes, are you trying to join me in the closet? I go, I didn't know you were in here. And she's like, well, it's open. Like, fun. Do you know what I'm saying? But like. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, like. <laughs> your breath smells great. Yeah, it was a great line. <laughs> and she was just like casually, like if you wanted some. I didn't even know it was. I didn't do it. But it was fun, and people, somebody would smoke a joint here, and someone was talking over here, and someone's doing a bump here. It was all, it wasn't, there was no shame. Someone was taking a mushroom here, and other people were just in the pool, how it should be. Fun, do what you want, no pressure, no weirdness. Anyone was weird. It was a couple yeah. of big dudes there that were like, yo, we're at, you're out. And it was it was great. And, and I don't know, I'm sure those parties exist still. I haven't gone out like that in a while. Um, Bones and fentanyl ruined everything. Yeah, dude. <laughs> what a fucking great shirt. I want to put that on a hoodie. Do I have to give him a cut? <laughs> yeah. Bones and fentanyl ruin ruined everything, everything, bro. It's true, man. Put that on your fucking comedy. That's a great joke. Oh, thanks, man. Because they ha it's so true. It's so true. It's never going to be like in like, you know, my formative years were in the 90s, like, you know. And that I, I raised you. Yeah, you did kind of in a way, but I I've always wanted to get back there to the place where like I could party like the kids in Fast Time or uh, Dazed and Confused. Mm -hmm. You know, like just '90s chill. Go to a kegger. You know, girls will flash you from a car. You could do a bump with a stranger. Yeah, and you can't do any of that shit anymore. Simpler times. Simpler times. Man. And the fact that you like you said you were like you loved this party because we were all just 
having fun and no one gave a fuck and some people were wasted and some people weren't and there were some people were smoking weed some people were doing whatever and it wasn't and it was gay straight old young I was one of the drunkest people there and yeah, I was the bartender were, <laughs> you were and it was it was a good mix I mean there was a lot of people there in a sneaky way and the fact that I I bet you, the parties that you they have I probably suck because no one's fun there's not a lot of personality. Can I say this? Are there a lot of duds in your generation? Oh, yeah. Duds. Oh, yeah. Just like they don't know how to have, they're not funny. They're not no, charming. They don't add to the conversation. Yeah. And if they do, it's like, a, what's it called? An improv when it's not the yes and? They just know you. Yeah. But don't add anything else. Yeah. So even if you are trying to make small talk, it's impossible. <sighs> Dude, we have to do another one. I'd be down, man. This is great. You have a lot of good stories. You got some good shit going Thanks, on. Thanks, man. I appreciate you. Do you want to plug your socials? Uh, sure. Dan Poshin, D-A-N-P-A-U-S-T-I-A-N. And you can catch him at an open mic where? Um, Let's see. The Dime on Tuesdays. The Dime. The Dime. On the poster. Yeah. Also got a show called Hard Lemonade, which is like uh, live music and stand up. Where's that at? It was at the Roosevelt for two years. Um, I'm talking to the comedy store about doing it in the belly room right now. Is it just you? Oh, no. No, it's my buddy's band. Uh-huh. And then me and a uh, female comic named Monterey. And we just have on talent. And it's kind I know. Of, Mo- yeah. Mona. Mona, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know her. She's I don't know great. her that well, but yeah, I know who that is. Yeah. Um, And then you have comics on top of it. Yeah, so the band opens up the show. We have the comics. And then the band closes out. The best shows we've had were in my backyard. I've done some great ones. Too. Oh, man. It's like that party you were telling me about. Like, everyone's just having a good time. Yeah. Okay. Well, look for him. Go to his socials. Look for me. Guys, like, subscribe. You also got my Patreon. Look on my website for my tour dates. Peace. Peace.